A good old eyeshadow palette declutter is one of my favourite videos to watch here on YouTube and I recently saw Sophie Alexandra do a video called To All the Eyeshadow Palettes I Loved Before and she basically spoke about all of her decluttered eyeshadow palettes and I thought how can I do this video without doing this video, okay? I wanna be creative, I wanna push myself a little bit. And then I remembered I'm in a ranking phase right now. I have done two ranking videos before on my channel. They are ranking makeup based on how difficult they are to project pan, and also ranking all of the eyeshadows that I have hit pan in 2024 so far. So I decided to rank all of my eyeshadow palettes that I have ever decluttered in my life. So I have spent the afternoon today, it's been a long afternoon, going through all of my past declutter videos, pausing, typing, researching, trying to find every single eyeshadow palette that I have ever decluttered since April 2020 when I first started my YouTube channel. It's been a long day, it's been a long day, but I'm here, I'm finally ready to film. I am so excited about this. There are some eyeshadow palettes I forgot existed and I'm sure you have as well. But just before we jump into the video, if you have not already, like and subscribe. I upload every single day here on my channel and I do a lot of bright, fun, colorful makeup looks. Today I've played around with some graphic graphic liner. It's a little bit different. I'm trying to get into graphic liner a little bit more. I'm trying to push my creativity. I've never done a style like this. I don't know. What do you think? I feel like I'm wearing a lot of makeup today and that's me saying this, okay? So it must be quite a lot. But I'm excited to get into this video. Let me know. Have you ever had one of these palettes do you love it? Do you hate it? Have you also decluttered one of these? Let me know down below. Okay, so this is my ranking board. So as always, I have named all the categories. So right up top, I have comeback. <laughs> this is one that I would probably repurchase if I had the chance or if I had the opportunity, anything like that. Something that I've decluttered and I really desperately want back. Next is I miss you, which is I probably wouldn't repurchase this, but I do miss it. And it's, it's a palette that I, I still think about a little bit. In the middle, we have no hard feelings pretty neutral. I'm happy that I decluttered it. I still kind of like it, but I wouldn't repurchase it. I don't really think about it. Next we have Bye. Very glad that I decluttered. And then at the end, we have Burn. Um, I know one palette specifically is going to be in this category. I'm not going to jump the gun just yet. So let's jump into it. I have got my oldest declutters to my newest declutters and it's been a ride. It's been a bit of a nostalgia morning, not going to lie, but let's jump into it. Okay, so the first palette is do you remember this? <laughs> this is the Bourgeois Smoky palette. This was given to me, I must have been 14, 13, 14. It is an old palette and you can see there's like three whites, three greys, a blue, a red, a yellow, and a black. And these were all shimmer shades. So for that reason, it's in buy. I do not like all shimmer palettes, okay? I do not. I love a good load of mattes. This palette I would not have back. It was not the best quality in the world. I mean, years ago, we're talking years and years and years ago, drugstore, not my favorite in the world, but that's okay, that's fine. I'm glad I decluttered it. It needed to be decluttered. It was, <laughs> it was such a blast from the past. When I first saw this in my declutter video, I was like, oh my God, I remember that. That is insane. <laughs> Next, I have the Revlon Photo Ready Eyeshadow Palette. This is so drugstore 2015. This is ridiculous. I actually am gonna put this in no hard feelings because I quite like the color story of it. I quite like the design of it. It shows you what to do on the lid. It shows you what to do on the crease. You've got a really beautiful teal and purple color story. I really like the color story, a nice mix of mattes and shimmers. However, I would not repurchase this. I'm glad I decluttered it, but I don't hate it. I don't dislike it. It's a nice neutral eyeshadow palette. Neutral is in feelings, not color, of course. <laughs> but I still really like these kind of purple blue color stories. I'm kind of wearing a purple blue color story today with like pops of yellow. I've got like a blue shimmer on the lid, though it has got some purple accents. So, I mean, it's stood the test of time. The color story has anyway, this palette, 
No, <laughs> not the best quality in the world. This Nip and Fab palette I completely forgot existed and when I saw this on one of my videos I was like, did I actually own that? because I do not remember it at all. So looking at the colour story, it's quite nice. It's a mix of cool tones and warm tones, a few blues in there. I love a good blue. Blue is my happy colour. A few cool tone neutrals, which again is right up my street. I'm going to put no hard feelings because this is a nice colour story. I don't think I would repurchase it and I definitely don't miss it because, I mean, I forgot it existed. So I can't put it in I miss you because who knew that this was a thing? Not me. <laughs> but I'm gonna put no hard feelings because I, I quite like this. I'd be tempted to pick this up in a store if I saw it now, but I mean, I, who knew? If you remember this, let me know because I don't. Okay, J-Star Jawbreaker. This is the one I was talking about. It's in burn. <laughs> it's in burn. I was a victim to the J-Star cult. I was. Um, This makes me sad. It really does make me sad, uh, the fact that I bought this. This has really good memories attached to it. I went to the Morphe store in Liverpool for the first time when I was a wee little child and I bought this and I thought it was the best day of my life. Yeah, let's, let's move on from that. We all have our demons. I think we were all part of the J-Star cult and now we can move on. <laughs> With that being said, let's move on. Okay, this is an MUA palette. And I have very good memories with this. I brought this on holiday. It was like the last holiday that I went on abroad into a hot climate. Uh, no, that's a lie. It was not. It was It was a few years back. This is like a, a cool tone pinky palette, which you would not link me and a pink palette, I know. But I was obsessed with this thing. Let me tell you, I was obsessed. I bought this everywhere. However, now... I would not touch it with a barge pole. <laughs> I'm gonna put in no hard feelings because I did genuinely absolutely love this palette. This was my go-to palette for so long, but then I just kind of realized I don't like pinks too much. I think the reason I gravitated so much to this palette is because there were quite a few cool tone neutrals in it. I'm a cool tone neutral girl. I love cool tone neutrals, cool tone neutrals for life, absolutely love. And they are the ones that I really gravitated towards. And then I kind of side-eyed <laughs> the, the cool tone pinks in the palette. I actually, I, I, I do remember this palette very, very well. I was obsessed. It was like my everyday go-to palette. I just kind of outgrew it, I think. The quality was okay, it's MUA. It wasn't the best, um, but yeah, this this brought back memories. This really unlocked some memories in my brain, let me tell you that. <laughs> Next, Too Faced Sweet Peach. Oh, do we remember this? I mean, everyone remembers this. Um, this was another cult. It was another makeup cult. It really was. I'm tempted to put it in I Miss You just for the memories. I tried to use this as a pan that palette. It was my first pan that palette attempt. It lasted about a month. <laughs> I hit zero pans. I do kind of miss this. I really do. It's such a boring neutral palette with like two pops, but I do kind of miss it. It's the nostalgia coming through. I don't know if I'd buy it if it was just in plain bland packaging, but I I miss this a little bit, a little bit. And I'm kind of ashamed to admit that. I really am because this is so boring. This is such a boring palette, but just like the smell, it smelled like peaches and the packaging was so cute and the color story was pretty neutral every day. I do kind of miss this, I'm not gonna lie. Okay, next, this was exciting to me. I bought this in TK Maxx. This is the Anastasia Alyssa Edwards eyeshadow palette. It was very colourful. ABH hadn't really done blues before and I was hyped. I was hyped. It was great. However, there were so many pinks. This palette was like pink with a pop of blue. I want blue. <laughs> I want blue. And something I noticed, there was no blue matte. Was there a blue matte? I could be lying. No, there was a blue matte. I just lied to you. I don't know why I didn't gravitate towards this palette. I think it was because you kind of had to do pinks as well. It was a very, very fuchsia bright pink leaning palette with a few pops of purple and blue and neutral. And that for me put me off it. So I'm tempted to put this in Bye. I wasn't really a fan of this palette. I bought it because it was ABH and I got it on a steal in TK Maxx. I did depot this palette for a while, never touched any of the shades ever. 
and then decluttered it. So that says everything. <laughs> this. I also forgot that this existed. This is a Bella Pierre palette. I'm gonna put this in by. I don't remember this existed. I really don't. It was, it, it was a surprise to me. <laughs> very, very neutral, as you can see. It's not the best picture in the world. I couldn't find many pictures of this for some reason. Very, very neutral, not much depth. There's like a random black, which, side note, I hate when palettes just have this random black thrown in with no even close deepening up shades. That's great for me, love that. But yeah, this has gone in by, very easy. Don't remember it existed, who knew? <laughs> Okay, I remember this. This is the Cargo Wonderlust palette. Again, the picture's a little bit small. I apologize. It's a very cool tone neutral palette with a pop of green and purple. I didn't like this palette. I think this was a gift. I'm pretty sure it was. I'm gonna put it in buy. I was gonna put it in no hard feelings just for the fact that it had cool tone neutrals in there, but I actually got this palette when I was blonde. And when I was blonde, I hated cool tone neutrals. I would gravitate towards warm tones, oranges, yellows, reds, super, super like rich oranges, loved all that kind of stuff. Me now, different girl, different girl. It's crazy how dyeing your hair can change your preferences so much. The NYX Ultimate Edit. Oh, uh, this was a fire starter. This was a fire starter because this was my first colorful palette. I think the Juvia's Place Zulu palette was like my first colorful palette, but this, maybe this was the first, who knows? My boyfriend's snoring. <laughs> He's in the studio next to me. So if you hear snoring, it's him. So the quality of this wasn't the best in the world. It really wasn't. Um, I heard Nick's, oh, amazing quality, Mwah, chef's kiss. This was not the best quality. I didn't end up reaching for it that much. You could only do a very sunset-y kind of look with this palette. Sunsets have never really been my style. I'm more blue, grungy, cool toned. With this, you can't really do it. There was a blue, there was a green, great. You can't really expand on it. So um, I'm gonna put no hard feeling, am I? No, I'm gonna go with Miss You, just because of the nostalgia. I loved this palette when I had it. It was my gateway drug into color. So for that reason, I'm gonna put I Miss You. This is the Technic, what was it called? It was called the Invite Only Palette. This quality was good. Okay, this quality was pretty damn good. But again, it was these mauve pinky tones that I'm not really interested in. I think I'm going to put it in no hard feelings just because I don't miss it because of the color story. I miss the quality. Like who knew Technic could be this amazing quality? And it really was. Like I'm not over exaggerating that. I tried this and I was like, Oh my God, this is like high end. It was so good, but the color story wasn't my thing. I think I must've got this in a glossy box or some kind of mystery bag because I would not go out and purchase this, but the quality alone puts it quite high on the ranking list and I'm pretty happy about that. Next, oh, there was some, there was some beef with this. This is one of those Revolution four pound dupe palettes. I know they duped everything, but this one was the Modern Renaissance. And I don't know why I bought this because I already had the Modern Renaissance. So why do I need a Modern Renaissance dupe? I had the thing, I had the real thing. I think a part of me was so curious to see the quality difference because one was 40 pound and one was four, you know? So I'm gonna put this in buy. I did not need this at all. <laughs> I had the real thing, but it was just curiosity. It was four pound. I was like, it's four pound. It's four pound. It's, fi it's fine, it's fine. I shouldn't do that. I've learnt now, four pound is four pound. All the things that four pound can buy you, you don't need to waste it on an eyeshadow palette that you know you're never gonna use. So I'm gonna put this in buy, not the best thing in the world. The quality was fine. I did do like a head to head years ago. It's nothing, nothing special. It's fine, it's revolution, whatever. This is the makeup obsession, I think. Be passionate about palette. 
This again was four pound. Okay. And I had to refresh. I had to revise <laughs> because when I was watching me actually declutter this back in 2020, I did say this was four pound and I just couldn't resist. I'm very glad I've got out of that mindset now because now if I see a four pound palette that I know I'm not going to use, I'm not going to buy it, which makes sense, you know, logic. But at the time, I did not know. I did not know. I was just like, four pound, I've got to buy it. Yeah. I was watching all these big time beauty gurus have hundreds of eyeshadow palettes in their collection. And I feel like I got in that mindset of, I have to buy everything. And that was really bad. <laughs> I'm glad I've got out of that mindset. So I'm going to put this in buy. I don't think I used it more than five times, really. It was a big fat waste of money. I'm glad I got rid of it would not repurchase it. I'm really realizing come back is, is pretty lonely up top. I'm pretty happy with most of the things that I've decluttered. I don't even know if I'll have one comeback. Okay, Morphe Q, what is this called? I can't remember. It was the blue and orange one. This is going in burn. I have actual beef with this palette. This palette was a palette that I desperately wanted for probably years, to be honest. I saw it released and I saw all these beauty gurus get it and I knew I loved blue eyeshadow and I was like, oh my God, this palette is visually beautiful. And it is, like this palette visually, 10 out of 10 chef's kiss. I got it, the quality was the worst quality I think I've ever used in my life. And that was all the way back in 2020 when I really hadn't used many high-end eyeshadows or anything like that. Even then, I, I tried it. I was so disappointed. These shimmers were thick. They were thick and not in a good way. They were really firmly pressed and really thick. The matte set my eyes off. Like, my eyes are kind of leaky anyway, but only in, like, wind and, like, really cold weather. This eyeshadow palette set them off and I've never had that with another eyeshadow palette. The expectation was up here. The reality was through the floor. And just because of that, because I'd hyped it up so much in my head, it's gotta go in burn. It's gotta go with J-Star. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm gonna get a lot of hate for that. Violet Voss Nicole Concilio palette. This was a really good quality palette. I'm not gonna lie. I did like this palette. I think I might put it in Miss You because it was good while it lasted. There was a lot of these super orangey tones though. They were very popular in like 2016, 2018. And I bought this palette because I saw a blue in it and I was like, it's a blue palette. <laughs> I really had to learn the difference between a blue palette and a palette with a blue in it because any palette with a blue, I would just buy it straight away. I remember buying this in my very, very small town. They had never supplied Violet Voss before. I had never really heard of Violet Voss before. I'd kind of heard things through the grapevine and I found this in a Christmas set in my very small town and I was like, ah! <laughs> I never thought I'd be able to buy it. And I found it in my small town and I was like, without a thought, without a single thought, I bought it straight away because of that, like, I never thought I'd be able to buy this. I have to buy it. It was a nice palette. I do have a few of these shades depotted. Some of the like murky, sicky, greeny shades. So disgusting, but they are so beautiful. I do have two of these shades depotted and I did make a rule with myself that if I depotted the palette, I'm not counting it on this list, but I think two out of the like, I was gonna say 40, it's not 40, it's 20 shades. Two out of the 20 shades, I will allow myself to call this a declutter. But if you're wondering where like the J-Star Conspiracy palette is or the Barry M Tiger palette, I have depotted most of those shades. So I'm not counting it in this video, but I do kind of miss it. I do kind of miss it. It's either miss you or no hard feelings but I'm gonna keep it in Miss You. This, the LA Dreams palette by Makeup Obsession. Look at this color story. It is so pretty. And again, I do have, I think two of these shades depotted. I, I might go with Miss You. I'm not gonna lie, I might go with Miss You. It is a pretty palette. And I remember seeing this when I first moved to Liverpool and I was like, that's pretty. She's pretty. And she is, she's a pretty girl. But again, pinks, Ugh, I'm not a pink person. I think visually this palette is so aesthetically pleasing, but then when I try and translate that onto my eyes, 
it's, I've just got so many other palettes that I enjoy more and green and pink, I would love to do more green and pink looks because I think they go beautifully together, but I don't think I would like choose to do it on an everyday basis, just like on a whim, you know? But this palette, it is pretty. The only reason I decluttered it is because I just don't reach for pinks. It's the pinks again. I'm seeing a theme in this list. There's a lot of pinks. This one, we have two very, very hard declutter choices now. I wouldn't repurchase them, I think. I don't think I would. I honestly think Comeback is gonna be an empty category, which is interesting. This is the Beauty Based Sunset Horizons palette. It released with the Book of Magic, which you guys may know is one of my absolute favorite palettes of all time. I do miss it though. I do have a slight bit of FOMO. Sometimes I wish that I hadn't decluttered it just because it's like a collection. It's a set, you know, but I need to get out of that. If I'm not using palette, I cannot keep it for eternity. This again has a lot of those warm tones that I'm not gravitating towards. I kind of kept this palette because I thought I should keep it. And I thought that this is what the makeup industry wanted, not necessarily what I wanted to wear on an everyday basis. It had a really beautiful blue purple row, loved that. But these super warm tone orangey, yellowy, browny, there's no browns. Well, there is, but on the bottom. But on the top two rows, I would not have used those shades. And then the bottom row, eh. Juvia's Place Sahara in two. Oh, this, this was a tough choice. I was umming and ahhing whether to declutter this palette for years honestly, years. And I finally did it. And I think it was the right decision just because the mattes were all very, very warm. If one of the mattes was replaced with like a more cool tone neutral, I probably would have kept this for a very long time. The shimmers were gorgeous. There were these two beautiful blue shimmers. Absolutely loved it. But again, it was like, I can't wear this palette without it being super warm tone even if I put blues with it, because the mattes were so red-based. Ah, for the shimmers, it's I miss you, but for the mattes, it's no hard feelings. I'm gonna put it in miss you, because I do. I do miss it. I miss these shimmers, but I could not justify keeping a whole palette for two beautiful shimmers. The mattes were beautiful, the quality was beautiful, everything was beautiful, it was just personal preference for me. If I'm gonna have a blue shimmer, Nine times out of 10, I'm gonna wanna pair it with a cool toned matte. So yeah, I'm gonna, mm, I'm gonna put it in Miss You. Okay, Riviera, this is the same thing. Why do brands put blue shimmers and not offer any cool tone mattes? I don't understand. This bottom row of mattes were all so warm toned. And then we had quite a few shimmery cool toned shades. So I don't understand. I'm gonna put this in no hard feelings. I wish there was a cool tone matte in here. Just one, just one. Because then I probably would have kept it. But I just, I, I don't want to pair cool tone shimmers with super warm tone mattes. It's just not a thing. I'm sensing a theme in this video. I really am, I'm sensing a theme. And that's okay. I'm wise to it now. Steve Laurent Wild Things palette. This was in a Beauty Bay uh, subscription box. This is in Buy. This was very boring, very warm tone. There was like one silver shade in it. If I never wore makeup, I probably would have kept it. It was one of those very, very safe palettes. You've seen my eye look today. <laughs> I'm not that girl. I'm not that girl and that's okay, that's fine, that's okay. Yeah, Buy. Very, very boring, very, very neutral. Used it probably like twice and then was like, no. Oh, hot for Hue. I'm tempted to put this in I Miss You. No, I'm gonna put it in No Hard Feelings because let me explain. This was one of the first eyeshadow palette reviews that I ever did. I think it might have been the first. And it got like a thousand views on my YouTube channel way back when it released in like 2020 time. And for me, that was such a huge achievement because I just started my channel and I'd gone out, I'd bought this palette. I did like the palette, that's why I bought it. And I did a review and loads of people watched it and I was so excited about that. So it's definitely got some nostalgia attached to it. The color story now is definitely not me, <laughs> definitely not me at all but it does have that little bit of nostalgia to it. It kind of kick-started my review love, I guess, and 
I'm grateful for it. I'm very, very, very happy with this palette. I think it was really pretty. It was nice quality. But yeah, nostalgia is the reason why it's not in buy. Huda Neon Green Obsessions. Oh, I wanted to love this. I wanted to fall in love with this and this be my dream palette. However, it was not. This palette was marketed to be like super duochrome like spacey, beautiful, like really unique color story. I love the color story. The quality, not, not great, not great. Um, I'm going to put it in man, buy or no hard feelings. If it was good quality, it would be in no hard, if it was good quality, I'd have kept it, <laughs> you know. Um, I'm going to put it in no hard feelings. I wish this was better than it was. This had the potential to be so good. And I bought this in TK Maxx. The colour story of this is so pretty. It is so nice. I would have loved this if it was actually good. This was definitely a quality issue. This is the reason why I decluttered it. Quality, not there at all. Yeah, definitely no hard feelings. I wish it could be higher. It's just not. Oh, the smoky palette. Bye. <laughs> this is the Technic smoky palette. I got this because Make Me Up Missa had like a phase of doing super grey toned smoky eyes. She looked beautiful in them. Beautiful. And I know I'm rocking a kind of smoky eye right now, but grey scale, I'm not a fan of. I always say I love cool tones and I do, but grayscale, no. I like taupes, not gray. Even if these had the slightest bit of brownie taupiness to it, I would love it. And also I found that the gradients was just too similar. This could have been a three shade palette, maybe a four shade palette if you wanted that black and white. Black, a dark gray, a light gray, and a white. It didn't need these like four very similar grays in it. I didn't like that. The quality was pretty good. I was happy with the quality. I bought this simply because of Make Me Up Miss Her and simply because of FOMO. I should not have done that. <laughs> Sorry. This, again, Make Me Up Miss Her. I'm coming for you. <laughs> I'm joking. I love Make Me Up Miss Her so much. I feel like I know her, but I don't. And that's dangerous because that is crossing a line. <laughs> but this is a dupe for the Love Tahiti palette. It's the W7 Mardi Gras palette. I did a review on this as well. So I, I yeah, I'm happy about that. But I am going to put it in buy. It was nice if you're like just getting into makeup. But then I suddenly realized half of this palette well, more than half of this palette. There was only two rows of shades that I would actually use without being forced. And that's not a good sign. <laughs> it was pretty much all purple, pink, and orange. I, she says, wearing kind of purple eyeshadow today. I don't gravitate towards those shades on an everyday basis. These blue and greens, loved. And that was the reason I was holding onto this palette for so long. It was because I loved these blues and greens, but it was such a huge palette. And I slowly realized that the quality was not there at all on this. So yeah, this is going in by. Shimmers were those really hard pressed, thick, dense shimmers. Not a fan, not a fan. It took me a while to realize that though. Huda Mauve Obsessions. Now I gave myself a bit of an ultimatum because I had this palette and I also had the ColourPop Making Mauves. They were both mauve toned palettes and I do not wear mauves often at all. So I told myself I can have one or the other. This ended up going. I really liked this middle shade, which is more of a taupey mauve. Again, I love my taupes. This, I think, is going to go in no hard feelings. I don't miss it, but I also am not like, bye, you know? I do like the palette. It was a nice palette. I don't miss it, though. I have kind of gotten into slightly more taupey, mauve shades since decluttering this. However, I have not touched my ColourPop Making Mauves in over a year so I would not have touched this either so this was a wise declutter for me I'm glad about that this I'm tempted to put in burn <laughs> this was the XX Revolution chameleon palette this was revolutions go at duochromes and they tried um I'm gonna yeah they tried they didn't necessarily succeed um they were just very bland shades. They weren't very good. They really weren't very good. I got this on clearance and I thought I was the luckiest person alive. And then I realized why it was on clearance because it was bad. I decluttered this 
very quickly after buying it. It was not good. I did completely finish the first shade reluctantly. I really wish I hadn't have put myself through that, to be honest, but I did. Here we are. I, I really didn't like it. The duochromes were not duochroming. I didn't even wear the pink and purple, I don't think. The browns were a bit blair yeah not great did not like this palette the baroque palette oh do we all remember my drama with this so this was a palette that i wanted to love so much and i didn't declutter it for years even though i didn't like it i did not declutter this for years and it was one of those fantasy self palettes like i wanted to love it i wanted to wear it i wanted to be that girl in these gray tones but we've discussed already in this video i'm just not into gray tones i'm not into gray tones i wanted to keep all my colourpop palettes together and this was the palette that I was just like, I don't reach for, I don't like it. There was a lot of sequin shades in that palette. I don't like sequin shades, we've been through this. It was one of those palettes that once it was gone, I was then glad that I decluttered it, but the actual decision of decluttering it was hard. I did not want to declutter it. I wanted all my ColourPop palettes together. ColourPop is quite expensive to get here in the UK. I know it's like super drugstore in the US, but with shipping and sometimes customs as well, it can get very expensive. And you can't just buy this in the UK. You've got to go on the ColourPop website. You can't just go into Walter. So it was definitely a tough decision for me to declutter it once it was gone thank god <laughs> so this is in buy it's not in burn it hasn't offended me but yeah this is definitely in buy the total eclipse palette from w7 this again make me up miss up she is the reason for all of my spending this was a dupe of the huda beauty mercury retrograde palette and i really wanted that palette for a very long time so when w7 came out with a dupe i thought oh my god this is great i can buy the palette for like four pound i can see if i like it and i did enjoy it for the first like year of having it and then i realized i only liked it because of the like four blue tones in there and i never reached for anything else in the palette which was a massive waste. Once I realized that, I kind of realized that this is not a palette for me. Again, why put cool tone shimmers in a palette if there's no cool tone mattes? I don't understand, I don't understand. I'm gonna put this in no hard feelings because the quality of this was actually really, really good. There was a lot of duochromes in here that were really, really beautiful. I did enjoy playing with these shades. However, again, just so warm tone on the matte side and I don't like that. I want some taupes. Once I realized that I was only clinging on to the like four blue shades, it was quite easy for me to declutter, but I don't miss it. Next I have this Morphe Smoke and Shadow palette. I decluttered this very, very quickly after buying it. I think I bought this when I had blonde hair and I didn't like greys. You think I would have learned? You really think I would? With the Smoky palette, with the Baroque palette, this is like number three, you know, attempt number three. <laughs> and I just, I didn't reach for it. However, now with my brown hair, I think I would reach for this a lot more. The quality was fine. It was pretty good. I think I would reach for this a lot more if I had it now. Can you tell I was hung up on wanting to love grey? I really wanted to be that girl who wore grey eyeshadow. However, I'm a warm taupe girly now warm taupe i still miss you i will still repurchase you i just haven't haven't got around to it yet i feel like this would be a nice palette for me now however i've got so many eyeshadow palettes i'm not going to be keeping ones that are just okay and i feel like this is like an okay palette so i probably wouldn't repurchase it just because i know i have better and I know I have things that I would rather reach for. So this might be a comeback, like maybe, but for now I'm gonna put it in Miss You. The Huda Khaki Haze Palette. Ooh, this was another really tough declutter, but once I got rid of it, I felt very free. So it was definitely a good declutter. I'm probably gonna put this in Miss You as well. I just never reached for it. It was another one of those palettes. I found it on a steal in TK Maxx and I was like, oh my God. FOMO, yeah, gotta buy. And I just never reached for it. It was like a chore to reach for. I had to force myself to reach for it, but I did like it. I just think it was because I had so many eyeshadows in my collection, I still do. I just couldn't get round to it. And I don't really wear greens. I really don't. I can't remember the last time that I wore 
a green look or this I might put in burn as well is that too harsh no I'm gonna put it in burn <laughs> so this is the revolution night and day palette it is a dupe for a Pat McGrath palette and I bought this first of all when I was on a no buy so shouldn't be doing that that's not good however I bought this because I really like the color story this is not one of those palettes that has a pop of blue with no cool tone mattes this is a very cool tone palette I really really loved it the quality not there not there not great I remember when this first released way back when I was in college and I really wanted this so I stumbled across it unwillingly one day while I was out a few years ago and I was like I'm an adult now I'm gonna buy what I wanted to buy I shouldn't have it was not good <laughs> a lot of these shades were very similar to my pan that palette at the time as well which was my elf truffles palette it was kind of like why am I buying this because I know I won't be able to use half the palette because I'm so focused on my pan that palette it. the shimmers weren't good at all not not great so I'm gonna put that in burn <laughs> this was another one that I actually forgot that I owned until I went through digging uh through my declutter videos this is the NYX mystic petals palette and it's another one of those tealy green mauvey palettes I think this is really cute it is like a grungy version of the LA dreams palette I think this is really pretty but I actually can't remember ever owning it so I'm gonna put it in no hard feelings I vaguely remember owning it but I don't remember any looks that I did I don't remember the quality of it so color story wise I like it it's nice but I I don't remember it at all so there's that and then finally this has been a very long video <laughs> this has been a very long video and hopefully I can cut it down a little bit but this is the khaki calling khaki that's it calling khaki palette by morphe and it, I mm, I'm gonna put it in by or no hard feelings it was another one of these khaki kind of palettes however if you look at this there isn't really any khaki in it there's this super bright green and then a lot of neutrals so there's no real khaki shade if you look at the huda palette in the middle there's this like super grungy khaki matte this didn't have it it was a green and neutral palette it wasn't necessarily khaki in my opinion so i'm gonna put it in no hard feeling mm, no i'm gonna put it in buy i am i'm gonna do it putting it in buy <laughs> so here we go oh my god i am exhausted i've been filming for about an hour 50 minutes that's nice <laughs> this has been such a long video if you're still here oh my god you're a saint how have you survived what do you think of my ranking this has been so fun this has been something that i've wanted to do for quite a while i'm very glad that i've got it done and i'm happy with this list there are a few palettes here that i'm just like when when did i own you when did I own you? How many palettes are here? 33 palettes. That's a lot of money kind of wasted there, isn't it? Mm, that's sad. Sometimes there are eyeshadow palettes that just don't gel well with you. That's okay. That's fine. Let me know what is a palette that you have decluttered that maybe you really, really miss or that you are so thankful that you finally decluttered because I think that would be such a fun discussion down in the comments. Would you disagree with anything here or have you owned anything here? Do you still own anything here? Just let me know all your thoughts down below. But with that being said, this is where I'm going to love you and leave you. It is been a long one today if you are still here till the end you are an absolute trooper thank you so much don't forget i upload every single day so i will see you tomorrow for a brand new video bye bye